Anthony, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. In fact, it's been said that maybe for the first time, you may be seeing uh, destabilizing Botswana following the outcomes of this election. Do you agree with that? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I do not necessarily agree with that. I think uh, people's uh, commitment to peace and stability and the ability to accept the elections has been proven over time. So one does not necessarily expect any uh, threat to the stability of the country as a result of the elections, regardless of which way they go. Mm. And on the other side of it, I mean, we're looking here at uh, issues around a disputed outcome, especially on behalf of uh, the Umbrella Party and the opposition in itself. Do you think that when it comes to being the disputed element of the election, that in fact they will not necessarily accept um, that uh, the ruling party will continue its uh, rule and dominion? Th that's a very interesting point, because even prior to the elections, the leader of the opposition, Umbrella for Democratic Change, Advocate Duma was asked that very question as to whether they will unconditionally accept the elections. Of course, he stated that if the irregularities that are so major as to affect the integrity of the elections, the party would not accept the elections. But thankfully, this year, uh, though a few parliamentary uh, seats have been declared, the margins are in the main safe enough such that even if there were some disputes, they would not be of such magnitude because it's normally in situations where the margins are so narrow that disputes can become as, as major in that regard. Mm. But on the other side of it, when we look at uh, leaders such as Mukwetz Masisi, and um, he's been widely criticized at some points, especially for reversing some policies that were close to one such uh, Ian Kama's heart. Um, as that, and knowing that, uh, how then does uh, the people, do the people of Botswana actually respond to it? I think uh, generally the people of Botswana have accepted several of the policies of programs that uh, His Excellency the President has changed. Because as you would be aware, uh, many Botswana were quite discontent with the leadership of President Kama, especially during the end of his tenure in, in office. For example, you'd know that they were quite discomfortable about issues of the uh, Directorate of Intelligence and Security Services, the hunting ban, for example. So when Masisi reversed some of those, that was met with, uh, with jubilation. Not only that, he also enacted some policies which had been refused by the ruling party for many years. For example, the legislation on declaration of assets and, and liabilities. He reduced the list of essential services, for example, by taking teaching out of that. And this have ingratiated the president to the people. And the BDP's victory this year, if it indeed turns out to be, it will be mainly because of the Masisi magic, the changes that Masisi himself brought, and also the split within the opposition uh, bloc, especially following the expulsion of the Botswana Movement for Democracy and the fact that uh, the Alliance for Progressives is standing uh, alone and also the fact that may be brought by the new kid on the bloc, the Botswana Patriotic Front. Mm. I mean, it's also fears that uh, actually what we might see in these elections is a hung parliament. Do you uh, foresee that happening? I do not necessarily foresee that happening. But if, if somebody looked at the results so far, so far the BDP has about three uh, parliamentary seats compared to the UDC's three parliamentary seats. Some may say that's an indication of a ham parliament. But if you look at those seats, several, most of them are, are seats that are, that are guaranteed. The reason why I say a ham parliament is unlikely is that the BDP, for example, is leading in, in, in council seats. Uh, the leader of the opposition for democratic change uh, advocate Duma Boko is lagging behind. The same applies, for example, to the leader of the Alliance for Progressives, Ndaba Haolati, and the leader for the Botswana Patriotic Front, Biki Butali. In fact, projections are that these may end up losing. If you look at Khaburoni, for example, and surrounding areas, the BDP is, is almost certain of taking most, if not all, those. So I do not necessarily see a hand parliament because several of the votes that are yet to be declared at parliamentary level are mainly those that already indications in terms of the, the numbers that have already come in, though not confirmed, the BDP has a significant lead. But obviously, the UDC is obviously going to make some upsets in, I think, about six or so parliamentary seats, including the one that is contested by the deputy president of the UDC, uh, 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 Dumela Sarjando.
We're going to leave it there for this uh, afternoon, Anthony, but thanks so for joining us and shedding some light in terms of the developments um, around voting in Botswana. We're expecting those uh, results momentarily, and obviously the Botswana Democratic Party hoping to retain its power.